Okay guys, um, this here is a 1976 Mercury 1150 or 115 horse inline 6. Um, this is a non-tilt and trim version, uh, that's why you'll notice the CMC power tilt and trim unit uh, bolted to the transom. Um, I purchased this off of a guy in Missouri and uh, being excited about what it was and that I needed it, I didn't give it a really good look over and after mounting it to the boat and coming along with uh, moving forward with my restoration, I came to find out that cylinders 1 and 3 had uh, no compression in them. Um, I've done some further inspection, but this is going to have to be torn down. So I figured I'd make a video for any of you guys out there that have the inline 6, seeing that it's an older motor, on uh, some of the basic components of it and how to take it apart. Uh, because I don't know about you guys, I don't have lots of dough. I've always worked on all my stuff by myself. Um, so let's give it a basic rundown. <clears throat> what you got here is your your cover, your cowl, if you will, your hood top, um, here's your main plug that heads back to the control unit up there, um, your steering arm is right here, uh, the front cover, your midsection, and your lower unit. Um, if you'll notice here in my lower unit the skeg is completely sheared off um, I'm gonna make another video also about how to fix that uh, fortunately I work at a metal shop and I have some great welders there that are gonna help me out with that um, this motor is known as the Tower of Power um, because it's really really cool um, just a really really neat motor I've they're really just awesome so of course there's many other options out there for you guys that are looking at motors uh, other than the older um, because they do have their problems being an older motor but we'll go from there in a minute sorry I'm watching my dog run around with things from the compost pile right now yeah that's my dog star knock it off okay anyway back to what we were doing here so uh, bear with me I don't have a tripod I'm really new at the YouTube thing especially talking to the camera so right here is a lever this will pull the front cover off as you can see um, on the back of this there was a pouch here that I guess held tools I'm not really sure from there there are three clips right here that loosen and you pull off these little arms this thing will slide out. And take that off. <coughs> Here you have the head. Pull the lever up. Sometimes it can be a little finicky to get off. Um, there you have it. I've been digging at this thing for a while, so uh, let's go through some of the parts. You have your distributor. You have your three carburetors. This is your coil. The coil wire I have here is unplugged because I was doing some testing. Your spark plug wires, your spark plugs, uh, which there's a really fun one down here to try and get to. You normally need to take this piece off. Um, you have your fuel pump, you have your starter relay, your starter, as you can see, the switch boxes here, you have your rectifier. Um, you have your two wires here that run all the way up into here up underneath this this is your flywheel and underneath there is the stator which these two wires connect to um, I had already pulled these covers off which will give you a good look inside at the piston rings um, to me it looks like one and three are stuck um, but before you do any disassembly which I know that I'll have to rebuild the carburetors on this uh, which I'll make a video on also but um, your best bet when you start undoing things is to label these wires. Um, so I got some masking tape and I'm going to go ahead and label those and then we'll go from there. Um, I guess to get started just to show you there is one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight bolts here that will come undone and we'll remove this cover. And then from the front, you have a ground strap here, a ground strap here, your manual choke. I don't know if you can see that the way I'm holding the camera. There you go. There's a manual choke feed, which this right here is your choke box, that little wire there. Let me come to this side and show you one more time. You can get a better look at it here. This here is your choke. You see it there? Uh, which this all pulls out. It just pulls up on the levers of all the stuff here. So we'll go through and I'll show you how to take those off real simple. Um, first I'm going to go ahead and label the wires. Okay guys, we're back. Um, I had went through and pretty much labeled all the wires. Uh, this will save you some time and color match them. Uh, later on down the road when it comes to putting things back together, I've taken this thing apart a couple times um, and just put it back together just to get familiar with it. I know it's weird, but whatever. A um, couple tips. The trigger is actually in the distributor. Um, it's not a serviceable part. Don't try and rip off your rotor underneath this cap. Uh, we'll take a look at that later. Um, always, I have no battery in here right now. There's no battery connected to this thing. Take your battery off, disconnect it. Uh, you don't want any wires arcing. These things are real finicky with their electronics um, with the inline six. A lot of times just taking the thing apart and cleaning up all your connections here on the switch boxes and, and down here can save a lot of trouble for you. Um, I recommend doing it. I had trouble starting this motor originally, but once I went through and cleaned the wires, it fired. Uh, but, needless to say, also um, a bucket. I, I like to use a bucket because I can put all my parts in there, keep them organized. And some simple plastic bags are nice too because uh, keep a marker, label things. You don't want to lose any bolts. That's never fun. Uh, stainless steel is expensive. Uh, trust me, I know. <laughs> um, Bear with me, this is my tripod. Nice, huh? Um, but here we have a small ratchet for unbolting the electrical connections. Half inch wrench, uh, 13 millimeter socket. Uh, that'll basically take apart most of the stuff that you have here. So we'll go ahead and remove the back cage. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, real easy. Um, I've already loosened all the bolts here, but you got these ones up here, these ones up here, these ones here. The four down here, four up top. We'll take this back cage off um, since I already did loosen them to save time on the video. I'll just go ahead and spin that through my hand. Always when taking things apart, to note the length of bolts because uh, if the bolts are shorter than the others, that means they go in different places. Yada yada yada. I think if you're this far, then uh, you should know that already. These ones here are uh, all the same length. Like I said, this thing's been apart. There is uh, ground straps that connect to this down here. Uh, they can break loose a lot of times, uh, so be be aware of that. Sometimes you have to replace them with another wire. So now that these are off, I'm going to go ahead and pull this cage off real quick. I'm going to go ahead and try and attempt to put all these videos together. I've never done that with any kind of editing software. Uh, that's your cage, so there's not going to be a bunch of part one, part two, part threes. So the cage is down, I'm going to go ahead and put all my bolts back. And uh, while I do that, I'll pause for a moment. Alright, as you can see, I had uh, placed all the bolts back in their spots here uh, to make things a little bit easier. Um, and what I went ahead and did was I went up to the uh, switch box here and I loosened these three. And I did the same on these three on this side, uh, including the solenoid in there and uh, also the wires on the rectifier. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, essentially loosen all these up, pull the wires off uh, one by one, 
and then place the nut back on where it came from. That way we don't lose track of anything. Um, so, bear with me. Alright, so going along staying in the same form and fashion, I went ahead and undid those. I undid the starter uh, solenoid ones. I did the other side of the switch box. Um, taking note where everything was labeled, making sure it was still labeled correctly. Uh, there's two bolts up here that will uh, have ground straps on each side. One goes here to the distributor. This is for the front side of the cage. Um, and the other one just bolts on over on the front side of the cage too. Uh, this is also your support for your uh, switch box. Um, there is a wire in here that's screwed on to the carburetor that goes to the manual choke. Um, be warned of that because when this comes loose you're going to have to disconnect that somehow. Uh, I don't know if it just pops up or what. So disconnected, set the bolt to the side because this is a longer bolt in the front then in the back so now that that's loose down here you have uh, there's two bolts one here and one on the other side uh, with a nut in there don't know if you can see that or not um, that'll take the rest of this cage off so I'm gonna go ahead and undo those uh, just a quick forewarning there's three bolts up here one two and three that hold this top cage that hold this top cage on um, these things really do like to strip out so if you can I can't tell if you can see that or not uh, this is a piece of junk camera so I'm sorry um, they they like to just basically cross thread themselves out and they can get stuck on here so sometimes you have to come from uh, maybe that one will be a little bit better view for you if you can see it you have to come from the bottom and loosen them up so I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt these two take this cage off and there's that wire I was talking about right there uh, there's a Phillips head screw there and a Phillips head screw there so I'm gonna have to turn this to get to it uh, but this cage is gonna have to come off and this cage is gonna have to come off um, be right back okay uh, now we're back I had uh, removed the uh, plate uh, here's the one uh, cord that I was talking about and it attaches right to here through the, the uh, manual choke uh, you just hold this and unscrew it it's a Phillips head screw now that you have all this off you can uh, put it in your bin Next is going to be go ahead and remove the nuts, that, the three nuts that hold the cage down. Um, I had put back the bolts that I removed, the nut and bolts. And uh, once you have these three free, uh, this thing should pop right loose, uh, just like that. Again, putting the bolts right back where you got them from is really important. People get excited taking things apart and the next thing you know you can't find the bolts that belong where they need to belong. Uh, this is kind of a fail safe on how to get things back together. A lot of times the manuals and stuff that you get kind of suck. <clears throat> but let's take a little closer look at what we have here. <coughs> now you can see the uh, starter wheel here um, which mine freely spins. Uh, the stators up underneath here. This is your flywheel. Your distributor gear and belt. Always check to see if these are ever broken because uh, they can break. This is that little plug that just goes in to the uh, choke solenoid. You just jam it in there. It's good to go. Uh, here's a better look at the front cage. Sorry about that. You can see your top carburetor, middle, and bottom these ones here are the WMK carburetors if you take a look down on the face here it's kinda hard to see with this camera but there's prints on these that tell you the name and the number and they're numbered individually onto which one goes where uh, don't forget that take note of that where they go <coughs> so now that we're here um, this 
This is probably about as far as I've had it disassembled. Um, I'm going to want to rebuild this. I'm going to want to remove these three carbs and rebuild them. Uh, the starter's in good shape, uh, but I can uh, probably take that apart. Um, some people say that you have to have a flywheel puller for these. Uh, you do not. If you unbolt these, um, making sure that your top dead center indicator is lined up with the one that's on that top cage, uh, this will pop right off and should give you access to your stator and whatnot. So um, from here, I'm going to decide what I'm going to do and probably have a follow-up video uh, for the disassembly of the carburetors from the motor and then be able to uh, show you guys how to rebuild these things too. Um, cause it's a learning process for me and figured I'd share it with anybody else out there that's having a little bit of trouble. Um, quick show here, these, uh, these plates do come off. Um, I already have the bolts loosened so I'm going to take them off and I'm going to show you inside too for this video so that you can see that you can see the piston rings. Alright, be right back. Okay, I had removed the bolts here. If, uh, if you're here looking at this and you're going to take this apart, there's a gasket underneath here will likely be destroyed when you uh, take these off. Uh, it happened to me. These do need to be pried off because uh, they get stuck on there. Um, but there's long bolts here and short bolts here. You can see there's a, there's a height difference uh, in the thickness of the metal. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but once you do pull these off, um, you can see into here, now you can see your piston rings. Um, and your pistons, you really can't get a great look at it, but this is a good glimpse of what is what. Uh, I don't know about you, but I like taking stuff apart, so kind of my shtick. Um, and by turning the flywheel, you can rotate all your pistons here um, and get a good look at all of it. Um, I think probably next step is going to be uh, taking apart the, the flywheel again. Um, I might leave it on there for right now uh, in case I do need to lift this thing up. There is a uh, grooved ring in here. It's threaded. Uh, they sell a flywheel puller that you can put in and uh, lift this up with your cherry picker. Um, but here's a good look at the piston on one. Uh, you can see here, this one looks loose, but these other ones are not looking so tight. Uh, two. Uh, hang on. Uh, those pistons look like they've expanded a lot more. You can kind of see. Uh, and then down here, three, the other one in question with me. Um, you can see that they're clearly uh, stuck on there. Uh, there. There's no gap off the actual piston. I don't know if there's something that'll just loosen them up and get me by, or if I even want to jeopardize that. I'm this far. I'd like to just continue. Um, time to replace all these hoses. Take, you know, go through all these. All these carburetors are going to have to be rebuilt anyway. It's a 30 plus year old motor, so it's uh, coming all along here, so. Bear with me guys, if you want more videos, let me know what you want to might maybe see, maybe you're going through something too. I got some buddies that know a lot about this stuff that are really awesome. If you guys find out people in the boating world are pretty fantastic. They're willing to share their information with others, especially the veterans of the game that have spent a lot of time with these motors. They're, they're pretty awesome people. Um, but you know, I do have some mechanical background. You can pretty much get this far. Um, this would give you access to anything that you need to do at this point. Uh, you know, removing carburetors isn't too far off from a step here. Taking the distributor off isn't too far here. Unbolting this screw uh, will give you a look inside the distributor cap and you can see the rotor and see what condition it's in and the main contact for the coil. These, if you're getting struggle with these, these um, have like a 1032 thread that screws into the distributor cap. Uh, these do not pull directly right out, so do not try and pull those out. I found that out myself. Um, I had one that had ripped completely out, and uh, as you can tell, it's the one without the sleeve on it here. Um, I was given another one by a really nice gentleman uh, named Tom. Um, he uh, 
was pretty cool to send me some stuff and show me how to test it that's why I pulled this out this one does pull out of the actual coil uh, real simple just pull straight out um, as you can see mine's corroded uh, like I was saying about the electrical connections on these things you gotta clean these things up man um, if you want one of these things to, to run right um, I need to go a little bit further into this thing and figure out what else is going on um, share some emails on what to do uh, with a couple people um, and because I don't want to screw anything up and I don't want to lead you guys in the wrong direction um, Here's a good look at the uh, the way the, the choke works uh, by closing that off. Uh, oh, sorry. You can see that there when this pulls up on this. Um, that's how your choke works. It works on the second one too. There is nothing on the third one. Um, pretty cool system. Um, but as you can see in here, if you look, I got cracks in these lines. There's oil everywhere. Um, time to get this thing apart and uh, get it back together uh, probably next step will be to uh, get this base loose somehow um, I don't know if it comes straight up or what but we'll figure it out I don't know what my dog's barking at so there we are for today um, if you want to see anything else like I said let me know um, I'm just a regular guy uh, trying to have fun with this boat just like you um, so thanks guys, uh, let me know what's up.